Welcome everyone back to the Pathways to Success podcast. Today in studio, I have Karen King. And Karen King is the VP of Talent Management at Project 202. Karen, welcome to the podcast. How Thank are you, you, Julian. I'm great. Thanks it's, for having me. It's good to finally have you after all this time. Sorry for having to reschedule you a number of times. <laughs> Recording schedule has been absolutely crazy, but I've been excited to speak with you today. No worries at all. Yeah. So, Karen, I guess if you could tell our audience just a little bit more about yourself, about your career, and your role with Project 202, just so we can kind of get to know you a little bit. Sure. So, I have been in HR since I graduated from college. I'm one of those people that found a career and stayed with it throughout their time. I yeah. won't tell you how long I've been in HR. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, throughout my career, I've been fortunate to work with several well-known businesses and organizations, and I've helped develop and craft their HR programs. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy um, having an influence on the day-to-day -day lives of our employees. Mm -hmm. And currently at Project 202, I'm the Vice President of Talent Management, which in some organizations means recruiting only, but at Project 202, it's really about supporting the entire life cycle of our folks. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, what got you into human resources? Like, uh, you, you are very passionate about what it is that you do. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, what were some of those things? So I didn't initially know that <laughs> I was going into HR. Right. Um, I was a business management major okay. initially. And in the summer, I had a temporary position in an employment office. Mm. And I really wasn't doing anything you know, out of the ordinary, but I really liked the vibe. I liked the people. Uh -huh. And so I started looking into HR as mm. a profession. Back then it was personnel and uh, the major happened to be in the School of Management, business oh. management, so I was already there. And so I just focused my co coursework on personnel, HR, mm -hmm. and I just enjoyed helping people understand what they wanted to do from a career perspective, helping yep. them find jobs, helping them um, unlock that curiosity and engagement at, at their companies. I love it. And that's, that's the mutual intersection that you and I have. As you know, I am a recruiting professional for 11 years, and that's what I do is help people find uh, opportunities and that's why I was really excited about the topic that we have here today that you're very passionate about speaking on which is essentially developing a roadmap to plan your career correct so help us understand with kind of a baseline first why is it important to even have a roadmap versus kind of just feeling things out mm hmm I think that um, in my experience I found that too often the the folks in organizations basically expect things to happen for them. Right. And then they get frustrated because they're not moving and growing in the way that they want or at the pace they want. Right. And sometimes that frustration can manifest in different ways. And I don't think that individuals realize how much power they have to take control of their own career. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that you have to have all the answers at one time. Right. You just have to actively be thinking about what are you doing to help yourself advance in your career and what could you inadvertently be doing that is stopping you from advancing in your career. Gotcha. Okay. So when you do you know, speak about this, like who are you addressing this to? Is it to someone right out of college? Is it someone who's already in their career? Like who's your audience for this? It can be anyone, okay. really. Um, I think the conversation may be tailored a, diff a little bit differently depending on how tenured the individual is. Okay. But I think it's something that can be applicable to all, everyone in all stages of their career. Gotcha. Okay. So let's start from the baseline. Let's say that we're ready to go ahead and start creating this roadmap to our career. Where do we start? Yeah. I think the first thing is to clarify what your personal goals are. Mm -hmm. And it can be your personal goal at the time. Um, yeah. So you don't have to have your whole career planned out when you're 25. Mm -hmm. You just have to know where do you want to go next? What do you want to learn? How do you want to grow? Yeah. And those can be the building blocks to really finding your passion and mm -hmm. what you want to do. 
So this is a fascinating topic, and uh, it's because I meet a lot of people who are, like I was one of those people after I graduated from college, I still didn't really even know what right. I did. What is kind of a process to really start to gain clarity on what you really want to do, what excites you, what would you recommend? Yeah, I think, um, you know, sometimes there are uh, tests that you can take um, okay. that can help you identify um, where your strengths might lie, mm -hmm. but I don't think you absolutely need those. I think that you, what you enjoy, what you en have fun doing, mm -hmm. um, I know that I enjoy interacting with people. Right. And so a, a profession, uh, a career that helps me to interact with people mm -hmm. is something that energizes me. I could not be a person that works from home all the time, for right. instance, mm -hmm. where sometimes that motivates other people. Yeah. And so what may be right for me may not be right for you. And you just have to kind of feel that out and just like understand, okay, where am I finding the most happiness? Mm -hmm. Now, every job has its bumps and sure. warts and you just have to understand no, one, no, no position is perfect. Mm -hmm. But finding the one that resonates with you mm -hmm. is the most important thing. And so I would say first, think about what, where you find your happiness. Yeah, gotcha. You mentioned tests a little bit. Um, you know, I've, I've taken a number of personality tests. Have you found any one or the other that was kind of a, provided a high degree of accuracy of at least a direction that you should go? Um, so I would say I found one that provides accuracy. Okay. And, but it's not, Des designed to tell you what career you should be in. Mm -hmm. It's it's designed to tell you where your strengths are and how you can um, be the most engaged. Mm -hmm. And it's called a predictive index. Ah, PI, yeah. Uh huh. Cool. And I actually just got certified in it. Oh, awesome! So I have been rolling that out to the folks in the Project Two Hundred Two Mentor Program. Oh, wow! Over the last two months. Yeah. And I have been having the best conversations with people about understanding what motivates them mm -hmm. because that could also be, in absence of those motivators, frustration points. Mm -hmm. And how, in my role, can I help eliminate as many of those frustration points for some of our top performers? I love it. I have lots of questions on that. <laughs> Man, okay. So, <clears throat> so let's say you start to kind of gain a little bit more awareness about you know, your strengths, some of your weaknesses and your interests. At this point, is it important to sort of figure out a particular industry or a kind of job? I guess, where do you go from there? Yeah, I think um, to, sometimes your people aren't open-minded um, because there are a lot of different uh, careers, positions, occupations where you could apply your strengths. Mm -hmm. And so I would say be open okay. to entertaining all types of opportunities yeah. where you could find that happiness. I would say you don't have to get uh, specific about an industry. Okay. I have provided HR consulting and services across multiple companies in multiple industries. Mm -hmm. And um, many times, Finding your strengths can be fungible in multiple roles, multiple industries yeah. across different different companies. Yeah. So just because I'm in HR doesn't mean I have to stay in HR. I choose to stay in HR yeah. because that's where I find my happiness. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say the most important thing is be open okay. to the opportunities that are presented in front of you. So the next step would then be what? J engaging and trying, I guess, what, what, what comes next? Yeah, I think you need to understand, like, first, who can you leverage to help you? And okay. so once you, once you identify where you want to go, how mm -hmm. you want to grow, what you want to learn, um, and you um, are open to those opportunities, let people know what you're looking for. Yeah. yeah. Um, networks are very positive mm -hmm. and powerful things. And someone you may not think could help you, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised. And they probably can help you in some way. Yeah. Um, I would say leverage your manager. Um, too many times people I have found rely on their managers to chart their path for them mm -hmm. instead of using the manager as a person to help you achieve your goals. Right. Um, too many times it's like, well, if I 
I've heard, you know, if someone is going to be promoted, then my manager should just be telling me that I'm going to be promoted. It's like, well, does your manager know that you want to do this? Have yeah. you had those conversations? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, no, if they wanted me, they would just talk to me. And so they're very reactive mm -hmm. in controlling their destiny. And I'm trying to get people to be more proactive in controlling their destiny. Interesting. So I'm curious, having you know worked with many different types of employee bases and, and, and really believing in this philosophy, do you think sometimes uh, an employee might come off as perhaps opportunistic and maybe like how do you how do you actually live that philosophy without intimidating others and perhaps your immediate manager because if your if your vision is growth how do you do that the right way yeah yeah that's a great question right? so I, a couple of thoughts there mm -hmm. one is that by engaging your manager as a partner to help you grow yeah. that can be a less confrontational and intimidating conversation. It's right. like, um, I want to learn how to do X. Can mm -hmm. you help me get those opportunities in the organization? Or if there's, if there is a project that you can volunteer on, yeah. um, raise your hand and ask to volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing. The second thing is that you really um, need to do your current roll well. Yeah, right. Too many times people get focused on the next step mm -hmm. and then they get frustrated because they're not getting the opportunities that they want. Right. They have to excel mm -hmm. in their current role. So don't get too far ahead of yourself, but understand, okay, I can do this well and then these are the things I want to add to my plate mm -hmm. to further round out my experience. Another thing is to ask your manager how you can help them. Yeah. Is there something that you can take off your manager's plate to free them up to do something that they may want to do for their career growth and mm -hmm. kind of be that, again, partner with each other? Um, I've also seen some success where folks have um, identified a gap in the organization right. and have said, I think as we grow or develop, we're going to need this person. And then I've worked with them to create this job description for them. Mm -hmm. And then we've socialized it and they've ended up moving into the organization. So there are so many things yeah. that people can do. One of the key things I got from there is that um, you were creative ways to sort of create, to, to, to add value essentially. It's not, you're not demanding things through entitlement, but looking for gaps within the organization and creating that. You essentially sort of kind of create your further you know furthering your career exactly yeah exactly so I'm curious though let's say um, how long do you think is there an appropriate length of time to be in a role succeed add a lot of value and then start having those conversations you know that's a tough question because I think it varies by organization right, and right. the individual and mm -hmm. just the culture of the company yeah. um, I worked for a company in the past where it it was kind of an unwritten rule that if you weren't moving to do something different mm -hmm. every two years, you weren't maybe growing. Yeah. That's not very common. So, but understanding those cultures um, could be a catalyst to kind of unlocking that secret. What is the right time? I would say, um, take you know, again, once you feel like you have, um, it's been competent in achieving the, the level of success in your current role mm -hmm. and what's currently on your plate, and you feel ready to take on more. So I think it's up to the individual mm -hmm. to kind of assess, and perhaps with their manager's help, on how they're doing. Doesn't mean that they have to be doing everything perfectly mm -hmm. before they take on more responsibility. No one's perfect. Right. But I would say there has to be probably a 75 to 80 percent mm -hmm. competency <laughs> in the current role <laughs> right. before someone starts taking on more. Gotcha. Because otherwise it may be too much at mm -hmm. one time if you're working on things in the c that you currently have on your plate mm -hmm. and taking on more. Gotcha. So as far as the actual roadmap goes, do you have sort of like a proprietary process, sort of like a... Uh, uh, a definitive step-by-step? Step. Like, tell us a little bit about that. No, I think it's more of um, 
in my mind, mm -hmm. some things that people can think about yeah. as they're creating their roadmap. So it's more points to consider mm -hmm. um, versus a proprietary product. Got it, okay. So walk us through some of those points. So I think we already started on clarifying those personal goals, starting mm -hmm. there, yeah. um, prioritizing them. What's most important for you to achieve right now? Right. And this could be both in personal and professional development, mm -hmm. um, but it's important to understand where you wanna go, prioritize all of those things, and then put tasks. What are you going to do to make them happen? specific measurable things. Right, yeah. and when? Mm -hmm. When do you want to learn this new process at your organization? Or when are right. you hoping to learn that? Um, when are you hoping to learn a new coding language if you're a developer? Mm -hmm. um, things are changing rapidly in that world. That could mean some personal time that you invest outside of work in order to achieve your professional goals. Yeah. And I think people sometimes put an expectation, I can't grow unless I'm doing it on company time. Yeah. And I think that inadvertently hinders their growth mm -hmm. because they've got this box in when growth can occur. Any other kind of common mistakes? It sounds like you sort of touched on that already that you would recommend uh, people be aware of in terms of like you're actually hindering your career by doing this. Yeah, I think um, by one is getting ahead of yourself, mm -hmm. which we talked about a little bit. I think the other is understanding that when your company comes to you and maybe for personal reasons or family reasons or other things, you say, no, I can't travel mm -hmm. or no, I can't relocate, that that in that is putting some um, in you know barriers around your growth, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Those things may go away if a personal situation changes down the road. But just be aware that by saying no, yeah. you could be shutting a door. Gotcha. The other things I would rec recommend is entertain lateral moves. Lateral so moves. Okay. Sometimes people think that growth only occurs if you're going up, mm -hmm. and it doesn't. Okay. You can grow your strengths, your career, sometime, sometimes by going laterally. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen people grow taking a step back and then going up. Really? So, so if they've decided they are wanting to maybe change their profession. Uh, so okay. gotcha. I am a developer, mm -hmm. but now I want to be a designer. Yeah, right. But I may not have all the design skills at the same level I have my development skills. Yeah. So I may have to take a step back, go up the design ladder mm -hmm. in order to achieve my career goal. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've personally seen that happen many times, mm -hmm. actually. And especially the design and also engineering, a lot of times there's overlap on the, on the front end. Right. Right. And there is, uh, and, and some people will discover their passion kind of along the way and then excel much further because they're doing something they love. Exactly. I totally get that. Exactly. And yeah. then um, I think sometimes people make a mistake in moving only for money. Right. And um, well, money is important. Sure. It is, it is not where many people find their satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And so really thinking about the reasons why you want to move. Mm -hmm. um, I have asked along my career many times, why do you want this position? And if I hear because it gives me more money, mm -hmm. I will challenge the individual to think about why they really want the job. Yeah. And is that going to make them happy? Do they understand if they think they want to be a manager, mm -hmm. what being a manager is? What it actually means, right. And uh -huh. <coughs> it may not get them the satisfaction and happiness that they're they're thinking it will. Yeah. So I so I would I would just say be aware of some of those those things where you could be inadvertently inhibiting your own growth. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, I think this is a lot of great stuff, Karen. So anything else to kind of, you know, wrap up uh, any other best practices to, to really effectively plan out your career? Yeah, I think you have to understand what to do when you have a roadblock. Okay. Okay. So you're you're maybe in an organization and um, maybe something has changed. Mm -hmm. 
and you're not growing as quickly as you would like. I think you need to assess, is this a temporary roadblock? Mm -hmm. um, or is this probably longer term one that I may not be over to able to overcome? For instance, um, early in my career, I worked for a uh, quasi-government agency. Mm -hmm. And the, my boss was um, a very nice man, still friends with him today. Mm -hmm. And he told me early on, he's like, I only expect you to be here for X amount of time because I am not leaving. And at some point, you are going to be ready to take my role. Wow. And up, yeah. yeah, and I appreciated that. I'm mm -hmm. like, great. He's, and he said, I'm going to grow you. I'm going to do all these things, and we're going to work toward that because mm -hmm. he knew that that's what I wanted to do eventually. Mm -hmm. I ended up staying longer mm -hmm. than he had anticipated. But, um, and he still had that he wanted to stay. He was not intending to leave. And so I had to make the choice. That was a longer term roadblock. Mm -hmm. I could stay and work for a man that I really enjoyed working for but my career wouldn't advance the way yeah. that I wanted to, or I could make a move and go to another company. And sometimes um, you hit those roadblocks where you may not see the opportunity as quickly as you would like for your career advancement, mm -hmm. and you may have to make the choice to leave. To leave. Um, oftentimes, uh, especially with the evolution of organizations today, um, there are shorter term road roadblocks. So maybe you, there isn't a position now, mm -hmm. but because of growth in the organization, because of expansion, there may be something in six months to a year. Right. You may decide, you know what? I love the culture here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stick it out because I am enjoying what I do. I am growing. I'm hoping for this opportunity to materialize. Mm -hmm and I'm not ready to go yet. So um, assessing where those points are and kind of what are, you, what are you willing to give up and what are you willing to keep? What are the pros and cons? Mm -hmm. And having that dialogue, inner dialogue, and, and sometimes I've actually written down on paper pros and cons right, and so that I can <laughs> see it. Yeah. Because, um, you know, if you're not happy, mm -hmm. life is too short right. to stay in a role that's not fulfilling you or to stay in a company where you might not fit. Yeah. And I think sometimes people get um, almost this woe is me mentality and don't realize you have control. Mm -hmm. We can have a conversation. If something's not going right at work, we can have a conversation about that. Yeah. Give us a chance to fix it mm -hmm. and talk about where you want to go in your career before you resign. Yeah. That's all we ask. It's just like, let's have that dialogue. Let's have that conversation. Um, but it is sometimes, you know, it's like people are frustrated, but yet they don't know where they want to go or how to fix it. Yeah. And sometimes just talking about it will unlock a aha moment. Mm -hmm. And so I really, really encourage everyone, no matter where they work, to have that dialogue with people they trust, whether it's inside the organization or outside the organization, and kind of try to understand where that block might be and how you might overcome it. I love it. Wow. Karen, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your thought leadership about this. That's why I was, I was very excited to have you on because you have been there, you have done that, you've, you've, your experience transcends multiple industries, and it really is uh, a great thing to discuss. So oh, thank you very much for Thanks that. for having me, Julian. Absolutely. It's been fun. Well, Karen, how do people connect with you? How do they learn more about you? Uh, tell us all this. Yeah, so um, I am on LinkedIn, uh, Karen King, and um, I work for Project 202. So, um, Happy to entertain any emails or um, reach out on LinkedIn and uh, would love to have a conversation with you if this is a topic that's interesting to you. Awesome. Well, Karen, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. This has been amazing. So, thank you. And everyone else, thank you all for tuning in to another episode of The Pathways to Success. As always, make sure to subscribe, comment, and share. And we'll see you next time on the next episode of The Pathways to Success.